So how have you been? Been all right. Um, how about you? The vacation was good? It was. It was good. We ate many things and uh, things were set on fire. You yeah, were, I heard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lindsay got footage of everything, so it, it should be amusing at any rate, hopefully, when she gets that up. Okay, we have got a mess of awful tonight. Um, I'm not going to lie. A couple of these are just sweet mother of God awful. Um, oh. So, you know, you came on a good night. Good night. I always come on the good nights. There you go. All right, so let's see here. Shall shall we begin the the horror that is this this awful segment I do? We shall. Okay. Get the intro going. Each week, Catherine goes out worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible things, brings it back here. A little segment we like to call "What the fuck is wrong with you?" And oh, this week. Ah, well, it's been record temperatures in the South. I don't know if you've heard about this. We, we've we had a uh, record heat wave going through the area, and um, people have been finding various ways to keep cool. Uh, we went to the beach, which, you know, worked, and people have been getting their, um, their uh, air conditioners and such things. Well, got a man in Georgia who had a, a different technique. Um, man exposes himself because it's hot. From Cobb County, Georgia. Cobb County man blamed the late afternoon heat for needing to expose himself in public. Martin Dwayne Bullock, 51, was spotted with his pants pulled down Saturday afternoon at the McDonald's restaurant and bus stop. Really? What? A McDonald's restaurant and bus stop. And makes bus stop. Last year. Yeah, it's it's you know two great tastes that go great together. Oh. Um, he uh, when asked why the when I asked the accused why he did have his why he why did he have his pants down exposing himself to the public, he advised that it was hot. Okay. I. We, like I said, better strategies. Public pool. Well, you know, I think this story, unlike some of the others, really has a happy ending. Because, uh, you know, it says that it was cooler in jail. So he really, he got what he wanted, which was he got cooled off. So really, I think the, ha the glass is half full in this situation. <laughs> he may not have even had to put his pants back up. Win-win. <laughs> Oh. And of all the places, the McDonald's restaurant and bus stop. I I find it that this... I didn't even know they had, like, a McDonald's restaurant and bus stop, but, uh, but there you go. Welcome to Georgia. That's, that's, that's pretty much, you know, you go to the McDonald's, get your Big Mac, you hop on a bus, and I think they give you a gun just for walking into the state. So, you know, that's, that's Georgia. Huh. I, I, but it was in Florida this time. <laughs> Wait for it. Um, yeah. but you know, of, of all the places one could conceivably think in desperation to be naked McDonald's. <laughs> I mean, for God's <laughs> sake, it's McDonald's. Like, I wonder, like, when that train of thought got to him, like, was this, like, premeditated nakedness? Or, like, he was just, he was eating his his Big Mac, and then he's like, you know what would make this even better? <laughs> uh, if I were not wearing pants, and then, you know, he made his day, his dream come true. No, I like, I like the idea this was a plan. I like that he, that he plotted... <laughs> And works this out that there was a script for this shit. He gets to McDonald's and it's like, at last. <laughs> you think maybe he wore one of those rip-away pants? Like he, <laughs> like he goes there. He's like, Hello, George. 
Joe. Yes, the, that's the, how that happened. This, yeah, yeah, the stripper pants. Ah. Okay, well, speaking of brushes with the law, um, have you ever lost your wallet or your keys or your phone or something like that? Mm -hmm. It's 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 upsetting, right? Because it's something vital that you need, and it's it's frustrating because you know you need your wallet. It's got all your ID and stuff in it. So, um, and some people might think to call the cops, but um, this next gentleman kind of took that a little bit too far. Um, Watkinsville man charged with threatening police officers. Pretty innocuous headline, but uh, man was charged with terroristic threats and acts after authorities said he called 911. Um, according to the incident report, the caller was irate, yelling toward the dispatchers, saying he wanted to kill everyone at the Clark County Police Department because he did not know where his wallet was. I will point out, I'm going to put him on the big screen. He looks remarkably calm in his mugshot there for somebody who was calling for the death of all the cops because he didn't know where his wallet... Uh, the um, deputies found the man at 9 a.m. in front of Wild Azalea Lane holding boxed wine... And talking on the phone, yelling about a situation with Clark County in a manner that was hard to comprehend. According to the report, the man told him he did not threaten anyone, agreed to let deputies look at the phone. There was a record of the man calling 911 eight times. And they checked with dispatch, and the call's been recorded. Deputies poured out the wine, told the man it was against the law to have it in the street. However, uh, Brian Adrian Cole was charged with terroristic threats and acts a felony, and he's been put in jail. Wow. You know, he's going to need that wallet <laughs> to pay for his bail being in jail. Yeah, yeah that's like that's like, like double bad for him now. <laughs> it was double whammy. I... Okay. One thing you should never do is get anywhere near a fucking phone. If you have a box of wine, especially the fact if your wine comes in boxes, hide your phone. Because by the time that shit kicks in, you have regret written all over you. That, that, that nothing good can come of this. And the ironic thing is he's probably going to find it like <laughs> right when he left it. It's gonna be like, oh, boy, it's <laughs> egg on my face. It was right there. My bad, guys. I'm sorry. My fault. I didn't really wish death on you. You, you. Anyone want some wine? <laughs> oh, you know I love you, police department. I could never wish death on you. Uh, my bad. It happens. <laughs> Who hasn't done that wish death on the police because, you know, they couldn't find their wallet? You've been there? You know, I reserve death wishes for people who do, like, awful shit, like Michael Bay. I'll wish <laughs> death on Michael Bay. You know, he's... Michael Bay took your wallet? He, he took a piece of my soul that I'm never going to get back. Not as bad as a wallet, though. No, not as bad as a wallet. <laughs> Oh, okay, so you were saying at least it was in Florida. Yeah. I knew it. Florida without... Every every time I come on here, Florida's done something horrible. And, oh, Florida is raising the stakes tonight. Um, there are things you see while driving that are strange or odd or... Or you, 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 you want to look away, but you can't. Like, sometimes there's roadkill, sometimes there's an accident. Or just sometimes, there's a tow truck driver jerking off. Um, Fort Pierce. Uh, a man was naked and masturbating while driving in Port St. Lucie on Monday. Robert Casey, who just turned 49 on Sunday. Happy birthday, Robert. 
uh, was driving his Jeep Cher Cherokee in uh, Fort Pierce when a tow truck driver pulled up alongside him. Tow truck driver told investigators he saw a naked man masturbating while driving the Cherokee. Uh, the man's hands were in his groin area moving around when Casey was eventually pulled over the side of I-95. It took him a moment to come to a stop because, according to the arresting officer's note in the reports, he was still trying to get dressed. When they asked him why he was driving naked, Casey stated he had a problem with this and he is getting therapy. Refund! Because this shit's not working! Yeah, I'd be really impressed if he was masturbating while clothed. Well, he just needs some, so. like, stretchy pants, I guess. Maybe sweatpants or something, but... No, nah. like his expression kind of like it kind of reads like, man, yeah, gonna happen to again. Yeah, let's let's get, just gotta just gotta look at him there because he's just like, oh, you know, like you do. Really? Happy birthday! <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Um. Hmm. Officer then patted Casey down and found a toy pistol tied to his leg, part of which was hidden in his behind. Another portion of the contraption, that is a word from the story, the contraption was tied around his genitals. Aw, see, that's a Saw sequel right there. I don't ever want the word contraption and genitals combined because contraption denotes something awful. It's not the device and device is pretty bad. It's not the, the, the machine and machine is kind of bad too, but the contraption, that's something unsafe and untested and potentially sharp bits on it, you know? You know, a, a contraption is what Wiley e. Coyote sets up to catch the Roadrunner. It's not really something you need to masturbate with. You, you don't, unless you're looking to hurt yourself. Yeah, you, you don't call the Acme Company for something to stick your dick in. Don't do that. That's that's. Oh, so there's something to be learned there. He could have learned from from Wiley e. Coyote and and all of his um. Uh, his uh, downfalls there. Whoever this man's therapist is, you are bad at your job. Okay? I understand, crazy people. A little hard to deal with. Understand. It takes work. You get paid for it. I know. But if your patient undergoing therapy ends up with a contraption around his genitals, masturbating at passersby on the I-95... You are bad at your job. I'm sorry. No. Uh, all right. You think maybe this was a suggestion the therapist threw his way? <laughs> it's like, look, instead of going out naked in public, perhaps you need to come up with some sort of contraption <laughs> to help spice up your masturbation life. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's not, yeah. That... Maybe they, they helped him build it. That'd be a fun activity to Aww. do together. Aww. <laughs> that, I, aww. <laughs> I don't want... That's not act... Aww. aww. <laughs> Just no. <laughs> all right. Let's move a writing... Moving right along. Um... You like Mythbusters? Yeah, I like Mythbusters. I, I am a big fan of Mythbusters. I've been watching them for years and years and years. And there's one thing they say at the beginning of every show. The professionals don't try it at home? Yes! Got a guy here. Um, well, he, he didn't listen to that advice. And... Uh, um, mystery hole in Gardner House leads to canon law inquiry, inquiry, and that's not canon law as in Vatican law, 
That's canon law as in cracked four pounder on the open sea, yo ho ho, fucking canon. Man who met away from his Cleveland Street house Tuesday was surprised when he returned July 4th to find a hole clear through the wall. Um, he found a hole the size of a half dollar on the outside of the side wall, about four feet from the ground under a window. Inside, there was a piece of plaster uh, the size of a tennis ball, and a piece of shrapnel was discovered behind a television in the living room. The police received a call Wednesday. They went next door and spoke with Timothy Lazat, who told the officer he had lighted a ceremonial cannon the night before. When he did, the barrel exploded. Mr. Lazat said he was not injured. He took res responsibility for lighting up the cannon. I don't believe he realized the house next door was damaged. Um, police seized the cannon, which the sergeant said appeared to be homemade. Stands one foot off the ground and is three feet long. Um, the incident is under investigation. The shooter could be charged with discharging a firearm, but a cannon is not a firearm, and apparently no firearms identification card is necessary to use one. Charges will be forthcoming, said the uh, sergeant, although it's hard to say what they will be. So, there is actually no law. Where, where did this happen? Uh, this is in... Uh, Oh, I hate when they do this. They never tell us exactly where it is. Uh, it's Telegram Gazette. Apparently, there's no law against firing off a cannon. Uh, is this Ohio? Worcester? It might be Ohio. There's no law against firing off a cannon. This seems like a significant oversight to me. Well... <laughs> You don't really expect someone to be firing off a cannon anyway, so... You don't expect... No. I mean, you, when you think that common sense should be used in something, in some cases... This is not the case for a lot of people. Common sense does not apply. If there is not a law about it, it will be done. You'd think you just want to cover your bases on this one. You know, you'd, you'd think you'd want to just <laughs> get them all down. You know, I've been reviewing the Tremors movies, and Burt Gummer had quite an arsenal. But that's a movie. Yes! You don't really need to own a cannon in any situation. <laughs> a homemade cannon, no less. I can't think of a more dangerous phrase than homemade cannon. Like, what was he doing that day that he just, he's, he's thinking like, you know, I got this homemade cannon I made just in case. <laughs> Wonder if I fire that off and like like he fires it off and then what goes like woohoo and then goes watches TV or like what I mean Well I what did he follow that up with? No, I, I, I I'm pretty sure he wasn't expecting the fucking thing to explode. He's lucky he's still alive. Don't do well, it. Yeah, but what was he I mean like even if it went perfectly, I mean you're shooting off a can for what? What did he think it was gonna do? It's a cannon. What yeah, there was kind of a, you know, you have to think ahead to that final step because there is going to be a large explosion and a projectile is going to be hurtling at a very fast speed. You have to figure out it's going to go somewhere. It's not going to be party streamers and shit coming out of this thing. That'd be great. Make a homemade cannon that had like party streamers and stuff. That'd be a good prank you pull on someone. Yeah, and, you know, until, you know, there's a hole this, this big and you, there's blood and the ambulance and yeah, yeah, yeah. Not if it's parties and streamers, then it's fun. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. We, we've, okay. Yeah, we, party cannon. They know what it's about. Chet knows where it's at. These Make it happen, people. Party cannon. These last two. Holy fuck. Okay, um, first of all, we, we've we often seen people on this show trying to smuggle things through customs. 
Um, we've seen them try to smuggle through drugs. We've seen them try to smuggle through guns and other dangerous implements. Tigers. Tigers. Hummingbirds in the pants. <laughs> Those poor hummingbirds. But this... This is a fucking first. Security staff spot five-month-old baby in baggage scanner after parents tried to smuggle him to the UAE without a visa and their luggage. And here is the picture on the big screen. I want to stress here, the kid's okay. The baby is all right. But yes, they tried to put him through couple were caught trying to smuggle their baby into the United Arab Emirates when airport security staff spotted the five-month-old hidden in their luggage in a bag scanner. The Egyptian husband and wife arrived at the airport Friday night, but were held at immigration as they did not have a visa for the newborn. Um, officials allowed them to stay until the relevant office reopened on Sunday, but in their desperation, the couple decided to make a run for it when the staff changed at the end of their shift. However, they still need to get through the custom screening, so they put the baby into a bag and bundled him through the x-ray machine. But their plan became unstuck when security staff noticed the outside outline of the body on the monitor. X-ray machine. Aside from the fact that they were putting their baby, trying to smuggle the baby through. Aside from that, aside from this is an awful thing to do, the first glaring thing that just leaps out at me is x-rays see through things. If there is a baby in a bag, we'll see through, see baby. Why the fuck would yeah like, that's what i don't get about cases like that you know the people trying to sneak in like tigers and shit like you know and and babies anything living it's an x-ray you have x-rays to see to check for broken bones and things x-rays you got you got the x-ray glasses and in the mail with the the see through in in the comic books and stuff like that's what they are. Yes. How do you miss this? This is like basic fucking science shit here. But it keeps happening. It's like, what do you think it needs to go through there for? And I I gotta. <laughs> which one of them came up with this idea? Because the other one, you know, the other one is going, I told you so. I told you so. One of them did it. And if you've ever been in a couple, you always know one of them has got that I told you so shit going on. Someone, when you do something stupid, the other one has obviously said, this is a stupid thing to do. Yeah, I'm gonna do it anyway. I told you so. People are saying that dad did it. Yeah, this kind of seems like a dad thing, doesn't it? Oh, he'll be fine. Just put him through. The you be quiet. You're going to go through the machine. Just stay quiet. You'll be okay. We'll get you on the other side. Oh, watch of despair. The baby will grow up to be the Hulk. Yeah, that that's not how that works. That's... That's not how that works. Radiation... That's the saddest freaking origin story I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> Parents try to smuggle baby and luggage through x-ray machine, become superhero. <laughs> yeah, it's not exactly it's like... He's not on that. <laughs> he's not like Batman or Peter Parker, you know, Uncle Ben died or Batman's parents died. No, it's... Dad put me through an x-ray machine, now I fight crime. Wouldn't it be great as if he got, like, a really stupid superpower? It's like, for what? Oh, put through the x-ray machine as a baby, and what, his power is like, something stupid, like, you can go back in time, like, for five seconds, or like... Well, that is very useful. It's really long. That is very useful if you want to come up with an appropriate snap or put down, and you just don't know it. You oh yeah, that's you get, almost getting killed. Oh, you could take down a criminal. 
you, you, you take down a criminal with your witty repartee. There you go. That's some superpower shit there. You're right. Let's write that comic right now. Damn right. All right. Our last one tonight. It is as th this is. Wow. This is just a whole bag of crazy. I'm amazed this did not come out of Florida. Um, I'm going to stress that the baby was not actually involved here and is fine. This was all mom. And yeah, I know it's kind of awful when I have to, to preface with the kid's okay. This is another, the kid wasn't even involved here, so everything's fine. But, um, now I got, I have no segue. I have no fucking segue. I hate stories like this because segue, this is segue impossible. Carla Murphy has baby, allegedly smokes bath salts, punches nurse, tries to bite cop. What is even the fuck? A Pennsylvania mom who had been given just given birth is accused of smoking synthetic bath salts in the hospital and going on a violent rampage, assaulting a nurse and a police officer. Carly, Carla Murphy, 31, of Altoona, was covering the hospital on June 17th after delivering her baby Tuesdays, two days earlier. Police say Murphy smoked the synthetic drug, prompting her to strip off her clothes and go wild in the bathroom. Murphy rolled on the shower floor, confused and unable to state her own name. Cops arrived to calm her and found in her purse a dismantled black pen with powder inside. The mother later called, quote, Disco, a street name for bath salts. As Murphy flailed about, a nurse administered the antipsychotic drug Haldol. Murphy responded by punching the nurse in the face. She reportedly remained aggressive, cursing and trying to escape the hospital room. An officer restrained her, but Murphy tried to stand up hit an attempt to bite a cop. Mur Police then handcuffed and arrested Murphy, who also kicked a nurse in the chest on the way out of the room. I have one question. One single question. That, that, that... Just, just one... Why?! Why? You're in the hospital. You've had your kid. Two days later, you're about to get out. Are you celebrating? Is it... I... It... <laughs> you see? Here's the, here's the question I have. Like, oh, there are a lot of drugs. I get why people take them. They're dangerous, but they think, you know, like, oh, okay. I'll be all right, whatever. But, like, I've never heard any story about bath salts that didn't end up with someone getting punched, attacked, eaten, assaulted. I, I just, what, what does it even do? What's the benefit of this? I don't even understand. I, eh. Chased by electricity. The other one thought there was evil spirits coming through yeah, the walls. There's some shit happening here. Like, at least, you know, like, when you get drunk or you're taking meth or something, I mean, like, it impairs you, but you don't think that you're being chased by electricity ghosts or whatever. Like, this is not a fun weekend. You a cannibal? Like, yeah, th this, this is not a fun weekend. This is not, you know, I'm gonna. I can see. I'm gonna sit back, have a couple beers, hang out with my friends. I'm gonna sit back, maybe smoke some weed. I can. I can. I can understand it. Cool. You're gonna relax, mellow. Maybe even cocaine. I can. I'll even go so far as cocaine. None of these drugs make you lose your goddamn sense of reality to the point where you are a fucking barrel of destruction. This does not seem fun to me. Like, do you know, or does anyone in the chat know, like, what bath salts are supposed to do? Like, like, what the the benefit is supposed to be that that people do it? Is it just hallucinogenic, or is it, I mean, it's supposed to be a synthetic knockoff of methamphetamine. Only when you change those chemicals just a little bit. See, the trick is, methamphetamine's illegal. You change the chemical makeup just a little bit. 
it's legal. However, you change the chemical makeup just a little bit, it's different. As demonstrated here. Ah. Uh. And I, I would never put something in my body called disco. Because that's just asking for problems. Well, I don't get why you would do it at the hospital, though. <laughs> yes! I mean, it's the... Like... <laughs> Like, no one's going to notice? Like, I mean, she was in her right mind before she did it. <laughs> That's going to be a fun conversation with the kid. I remember when you were born, I was at the hospital, and you were so adorable, and then I did drugs and punched a fucking nurse. Happy you know, times. That kid, that kid should become friends with the one that went through the x-ray and baggage claim, and then they'll be, <laughs> they'll be superheroes together. <laughs> It'd be like perfect. It'd be like, oh, what'd your parents do? Oh, that's nothing. This is what my parents did. <gasps> Bath salt and the x ray fighting crime together. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I, what we learned this week, I guess. What the fuck did we learn this week? We learned that just because it's hot, not a good reason to pull out your dick. Not good. No, that's that's not Lee. That's not a defense. They're not going to let you off. Just be, hey, why you got your dick out? It's hot. Oh, okay. Go about your business. That doesn't work. Um, we learned that losing your wallet can be distressing, but uh, tone it down a little, dude. Chill. Deep breath. Count to ten. Don't threaten to murder an entire police department. They don't like that. I'm not I, I'm not personally a cop. I cannot attest to this. Well, I'm pretty sure they don't like that. Just saying. You know, just as a general rule of thumb, uh, cops don't like death threats for any reason. No. Just a general rule no. of thumb. Um we we learned that uh you don't want anything called a contraption anywhere near your junk. I th I think that's 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 a life lesson right there. That's something to live by. Yeah, that's wisdom you can pass down from generation you know, that's to generation. You know, that's a new mouse trap game right there. <laughs> yes. Put the man into the pan. The cage comes down onto your dick. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Um. We've learned that uh, when they say don't try this at home, they mean don't try this at home. They don't mean some other guy. They mean you. You, if you are inclined to try this shit at home, you are exactly the type of person who should not try this at home. <laughs> How did? Yeah, uh, you know it's 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 it's. <sighs> oh, we learned that um, people don't understand how X-rays work. Hundred years after Mary Curie, they still do not grasp this shit. Seeing through things, you didn't. Did you? Did you just not? Did you miss that day in school? Were you absent? But it will give you superpowers. It will. It will. We did learn that. Probably lame ones, but it will give you superpowers. Uh, and and finally, I don't think we, we've learned that bath salts are not. But well, I would. They're not fun at all. There's no fucking reason to do this. I, I would think weed, at least weed, would be a hell of a lot less trouble. Because, you know, you, you get you get a little fucked up on weed, you're just going to eat your entire closet empty. You get fucked up on this shit, you're going to tear into your closet, set it on fire, and run screaming down the street. I just... <laughs> Birthdays are going to be interesting for that kid. Just the stories. You know... <laughs> 
You get the bronze baby booties and the bronze tooth she knocked out of the nurse's mouth. So. So that is, that is the news for tonight. I... I will say this. X-ray and bath salts need to get a party cannon. Just putting it all together there. It's... You know, you're wrapped up nicely in a little bow. You say this shit to anyone else, you sound insane. But we know the truth. Yeah, we do. That makes me sad.